Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel, and today I'm going to be counting down what I think are the 10 best cards within Pokemon card 151. 151 is coming out in a few days on Friday, and I am super excited for it to release because this set actually has a lot of promising cards in it. There's a lot of really strong new cards. It's a pretty decent set. I mean, you can even call it a mini set. It's that good. There are so many good cards in this set, and I think this set has a lot of potential, and uh, it's going to shake up the format a little bit, and I'm super excited, and I can't wait to talk about what I think are the 10 best cards within this set. If you are going to go on to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe down below here to the second channel if you haven't already. We're getting close to 8,000 subs. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe down below and uh, all that good stuff. And I'm super excited. Let's get into it and see what the 10 best cards in 151 are. Starting things off, we have Erica's Invitation. This is a really strong new supporter card that is basically a brand new Gust card. Now, it might not be as good as Boss's Order or Guzma, but it does have a decent effect. Your opponent reveals their hand and you put a basic Pokemon you find there onto your opponent's bench. If you put a Pokemon on to their bench in this way, switch that with their active Pokemon. So basically, if your opponent has a Luminion in their hand, a Squawkabilly, or any basic for that matter, you can immediately put it into play and then gust it up for free. Now that is a really strong effect. Now obviously you do have to see their hand in order for this to work, but the supporter card definitely could be pretty good in the right circumstances. If you're playing against a deck where your opponent does end up having a big hand, forcing something into play is also just going to be strong, right? Even though you do get the built-in gust effect, which can be good. I mean, not every time, though, you're going to hit a Luminion or a Squawk Ability. Like, you're not guaranteed to hit what you want, but you are a lot of the time going to be forcing more Pokemon into play for your opponent, which can be beneficial to you sometimes. Your opponent doesn't want a Pokemon from their hand on their bench. There are going to be some scenarios where Erica can be quite annoying. I don't think it is the greatest card ever, um, but I do think it is decent enough to maybe make the top 10 list, because I think it's a decent enough card that it might see a little bit of play. It's decent for control archetypes, and uh, it could be a very fun card to play. So I'm definitely excited to see uh, what Erica's invitation can do, and I am hopeful that people will play this card. Is it as good as Boss? No, but I do think that it will see some experimental play, because it is a decent effect, right? It has a decent double effect where you get Gust, and you get to force a Pokemon into play that maybe your opponent doesn't want to have in play. Next up is Alakazam. Alakazam EX is arguably one of the coolest cards we've ever seen within the Pokemon training card game. It has two different attacks. The first one, Mind Jack, doing 90 plus 30 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon is fine, but the main selling point of this card will be Dimensional Hand, which does 120 damage, and this attack can be used even if this Pokemon is on the bench. Now, this is a super annoying attack because you can have something in the active that can be annoying to have in the active, something like a Clefki, a Mimikyu, and what you can do is you can attack from the bench, forcing your opponent to have to have boss's order. Now, boss obviously is a popular card, and I do think Alakazam is going to struggle against decks like Charizard EX, because unfortunately they'll be able to boss you, especially when they have Pidgeot. But against a lot of other decks, being able to protect yourself on the bench while you lock your opponent's active with Mimikyu or Klefki could be pretty strong. I mean, 120 damage isn't a whole lot of damage, but you can use Choice Belt to increase the damage, you can play, you know, one of the glove cards. And again, being able to attack from the bench is just really, really powerful. And uh, it forces your opponent to boss you. Well, Alakazam can get bossed. It also has 310 HP. It's not easy to want to KO Alakazam. 310 HP is a lot of health to have, making Alakazam a really tanky card. So even if your opponent can boss it, the odds they can one-shot it aren't always going to be super high because its HP is so massive. So Alakazam has a lot of potential, and I'm super excited to play it. It's one of my favorite cards within 151, and I cannot wait to give it a try. Hopefully this card works on Pokemon TCG Live when it comes out. But it definitely has a lot of potential. Again, being able to attack from the bench is something we've never seen before, and there's enough walls in the format right now to make Alakazam I'm quite a formidable attacker. Alrighty, then next up we got Dodrio. Dodrio is one of my favorite cards in the set because it's a very versatile card that not only can be a very strong attacker in the right scenario, but it also just has a great ability. Zooming a draw once during your turn, you may put one damage counter on this Pokemon if you do draw a card. Pretty strong ability, right? Being able to draw a card is always nice, but the nice thing is you are putting damage counters on Dodrio. Now, that might not seem very good. Obviously, if you're playing against a Lost Zone Engine deck, you're not going to be too fond of this, but the main reason why this is good is because of Dodrio's main attack, Ballistic Beak, that does 10 plus 30 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. And then if you can put nine damage counters on Dodrio, it is going to be swinging for a lot of damage. And it's going to be doing like 280 damage for one energy. Now, you can combine this with other damage manipulators like Gape Jaw Bog, Damage Pump, 
Um, and it also has good synergy with other Pokemon in the format that want Pokemon to have damage on them. Something like Tyranitar EX might finally have a brand new partner with Dodrio. And even something like Hisuian Zork V-Star can really benefit from Dodrio's ability. So yeah, Dodrio is a really cool card, and I'm excited for it to release. I think that it's got some potential. Again, being able to draw a card and also do a ton of damage is really, really good. And if Dodrio goes unchecked, Again, sometime in the late game, this card can be swinging it pretty darn hard with that Ballistic Beak. Again, it can do one for 280 damage if it gets nine damage counters on it. So you just have to find a way to synergize putting damage counters on your Dodrio. And this card can start to become a threat in the later half of the game. Definitely a really cool card. Kind of a slept on card, I feel like, too, in the set. So definitely keep your eye out on Dodrio. Next up, we got Extra Type Bell. This is one of the best tool cards in the format in my opinion and i think it's got a lot of potential so it basically states the stage one pokemon this card is attached to it takes 30 less damage from attacks from opponent's pokemon not a bad effect being able to take 30 less damage actually is pretty relevant now it does work on stage one pokemon meaning that it really does work on all the stage one pokemon in the meta including ex cards and that's the main selling point behind it this card is it does work on ex pokemon and that can be very beneficial because there's actually quite a few good stage one ex pokemon in the format including a couple new ones in pokemon card 151 so i think this card definitely is going to see a bit of play due to the effect of taking 30 less damage and while lost vacuum is popular i do think there's enough stage one ex's out there that could really benefit from this card i mean even something like rev room ex can play four of these on one rev room taking 120 less damage so this card has a lot of potential in those type of decks and just being able to take 30 less damage on stage ones is good even older ex's again like oink alone could play this and again, there are a few new EX Pokemon that really can benefit from Extra Tight Belt. So I definitely am excited to see where this card goes. And I think it's a pretty cool new tool within the format. And I definitely think that it will see some play with all those different Stage 1. And even more Stage 1 EXs coming out over, you know, the course of, you know, the Scarlet and Violet era. This card might just keep getting better and better. Speaking of Stage 1 Pokemon, we have Arbok EX. Now, Arbok EX is a very strong new card that I think is not really slept on, but I definitely think is going to be a little bit more underappreciated than it, you know, people give it credit for. It does have the attack Menacing Fangs. It does 150 damage, and your opponent discards two cards from her hand. That's a pretty annoying attack, and the nice thing about Arbok is there is enough hand disruption supporters in the format for this card to actually be quite a threat in the game. Of course, you combine this with Roxanne, Iono and even Judge, and this card can be very powerful. Now, this is going to be really good into decks that really do not like having their hands small. Even something like Gardevoir and Lost Box are the two decks that really come to mind. Lost Box especially will not enjoy playing against Arbok. If you can Iono your opponent to three cards and then you can Arbok them to one card, that's pretty good. Now, they do get to choose the two cards to get discarded. But again, when you do combine this with another item card in Pokemon card 151 that is coming out, Snatch Arm, you have yourself a pretty strong lock card. Now, it's not the strongest card ever. In the early game, it's actually kind of mid. I mean, it's only doing 150. And while you can play this with, like, Heavy Judge to try to get max value out of it, I don't think Arbok is going to be great until maybe the later half of the game. I really think until your opponent goes down to three prizes remaining is when this card will truly shine, when, of course, you get access two cards like Iono and Roxanne to a small hand, this is when Arbok is going to get a lot better. So it's more of a late game type card, but I do think that it's got a lot of potential and can honestly win games because you can just shut your opponent off from being able to play cards. It is a dark Pokemon, so it has synergy with cards like Dark Patch. I've seen it being played with cards like Darkrai, V-Star, so you can use like, you know, six Dark Patches in a game. I've seen it even played with Galarian Moltres. So this card, I think, has quite a bit of potential, and it's going to be very good against Lost Zone decks specifically. Maybe not Giratina, but specifically Lost Box is not going to have a fun time playing against Arbok. And I am super excited for this card to come out. I think it's got some potential and can be a pretty annoying card. And because of all the hand disruption we have in the game right now, this card definitely can cheese out a few wins with that hand disruption menacing Fangs attack. One card that I think really doesn't get talked about enough is Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl, in my opinion, is a very strong card and is honestly going to see quite a bit of play. I even think it's the best single prize card within Pokemon card 151. It is pretty darn good, and I don't see enough people talking about it, which kind of scares me and kind of disappoints me because this card is legit that good. It has the attack Devolution Ray that does 100 damage, and then if your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolved Pokemon, you de-evolve it by putting the highest stage evolution back into their hand. That is a very strong effect, and this card quite literally will be very annoying to play against when you are playing an evolving EX deck. Any evolving EX deck. Charizard, Gardevoir, even some of the new evolving EXs like Arbok and Alakazam. 
and Blastoise are all going to be very annoyed by Aerodactyl. And I mean, while this card is going to be very strong, it does have a lot of different ways you can play it. I've seen it being played within Lugia V-Star. But also, this is a really good addition to Zoro Box. Zoro Box doesn't really have any card like Aerodactyl, and Aerodactyl is a nice addition to Zoro Box. I mean, it works with a double turbo energy, and even though it does 100 damage, the double turbo will make it do 80, which is still enough to knock out most of the basic and stage 1 Pokemon lines that are under the EXs, albeit with a few exceptions, like obviously Charmeleon with 90 HP won't get knocked out, but... With the double turbo one, you're already going to be knocking out the Curlias, the Ralts, you're going to be knocking out Ekans, Squirtles, any evolving stage one. I mean, even something like Meowskarata would be annoyed by this. Like, any evolving EX deck you can think of that sees play is going to be very, very good to play against when playing Aerodactyl. And it's got a lot of potential. Working with a double turbo is good. It does have to evolve from the... Old Amber Fossil, which can be a little complicated, obviously, but this card is still strong, in my opinion, and being able to just work with something like Zoroark is already enough to make it playable. So I think Aerodactyl is a very good card, and again, not enough people are talking about this card, because I legit think it is that good, and well, you are going to knock out Evolving EXs, you're only going to be getting one prize card, you're still just immediately knocking them out. Even though you're getting one less prize, you're still just removing them. Like, I mean, when you're playing something like Charizard EX, it can be a pain in the butt, unless you have a Grass Pokemon, because a lot of the time, you're doing, like, no damage because the thing has 330 HP. It's extremely hard to one a KO. And when you have Aerodactyl, that can immediately just knock it out by de-evolving it. It's a bit of a different way to knock out a big HP, a big HP evolving EX Pokemon. But Aerodactyl can get the job done and definitely keep around this card. I think it's got quite a bit of potential and we'll definitely see play the more evolving EXs we get. Next up, we got Charizard EX. Pokemon are giving us yet another Charizard EX in 151, and that's because Charizard prints Pokemon money, but this card is actually pretty good. Just like the other Charizard we have, this card is also pretty playable. It's got two strong attacks. The first attack, a Brave Wing, does one for 60, and then if it has any damage counters on it, you do 100 more damage. Now, one for 160 is a potential really strong attack. I mean, that's pretty cost efficient. You can play this with cards like Magma Basin. The main attack is going to be where this card is going to be good, and that is Explosive Vortex. That does 330 damage, and you discard three energy from this Pokemon. 330 damage is very good. I mean, you're knocking out a lot of Pokemon in one hit, most of the VMAXs, and you're also knocking out other Charizard EXs in the form, and all the other big stage twos. I mean, the only one that doesn't get knocked out is going to be like Blastoise and Tyranitar EX. So yeah, this card does a ton of damage. Now, it does have a lot of synergy in the format. There are a lot of really strong cards that will make Charizard good. There's cards like the already existing Charizard EX from obsidian flames that can accelerate energy to it and that's a card that's already been seen play within this charizard deck over in japan because the fire type charizard x here does give you some type coverage against grass types which are obviously popular as a way to deal with the charizard x from obsidian flames and it also can be synergized with the pogo charizard that has the ability where you can double the fire energy on your charizard you can also play with cards like magma basin armor rouge definitely a very powerful card and i think it's got a lot of potential in the format. Well, I don't think this card is as good as the Charizard from Obsidian Flames. I still think it's a good enough card that we'll see play, even though it's a one of in those Charizard decks, does warrant it a spot on this list, as it is a very strong card, and it's definitely something that will make Charizard EX potentially even more stronger than it might already be, as now you have a really strong fire attacker that can also want to KO stuff, and that's one of the things that makes the Obsidian Flames Charizard so weak, is that its damage output is very limiting. I mean, in the early game, you're not doing a whole lot of damage. In the late game, you're hitting hard, but now we have a way to do maybe more damage in the early game with Explosive Vortex. So keep your eye out on this Charizard EX. Definitely another very strong card. At number three, we got Blastoise EX. This is, in my opinion, the best Kanto starter EX in the new set, and it's a very solid card. It's got the ability Solid Shell that makes it take 30 less damage from attacks. Combine that with its 330 HP, your opponent will have to do 360 damage to knock this thing out in one hit, giving it like 360 HP. And obviously Path will shut it off, but still a very good ability regardless. And it's got a very good attack with Twin Cannons for two Water Energy, which is pretty cost efficient, especially in a format where Water Pokemon have a lot of support right now. You can do 140 damage and you discard up to two basic Water Energy from your hand, and this attack does 140 for each card discarded in this way. So for two Waters, you can do 280 damage. Now this card thankfully does have synergy with cards like Palkia V-Star, Bax Calibur, and the effect of getting water energy in your hand is not very hard right now when there's cards like Xi'an Pao in the format that can put you two waters in your hand. On top of that, you also have cards like Energy Retrieval and Superior Energy Retrieval and Clara to put water energy back into your hand so that you can keep doing twin cannons over and over for 280 damage. 280 damage is a very good number to hit, as you're knocking out most V-Stars in one hit. Of course, if you add a Choice Belt 
or one of the gloves, you're knocking out Gardevoirs, you're knocking out VMAXs like Mew VMAX. So yeah, definitely a really powerful card. And with all the water support in the format, this card just has to be good. So I definitely think Blastoise is one to keep your eye on because it definitely has some potential. And while it is a stage two, it also works with Irida, which makes it pretty easy to put into play. I mean, all you have to do is go Irida for a rare candy Blastoise, and boom, just like that, you have a Blastoise EX into play for free, essentially, which makes it really, really good. And again, when you can combine it with all the water Pokemon in the meta, like Xi'an Pao and Palkia, you got yourself a pretty good card. So definitely Blastoise has some potential, and I am super excited to play it when it comes out. Maridon just keeps getting better and better, and I think Zapdos is going to be a huge upgrade to Maridon, mainly because it was in the winning list over in Yokohama, and Zapdos seems to be a staple in Maridon going forward. It does have the attack Multi-Shot Lightning that does 120 damage and then does 90 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon on the bench with any damage counters on it, making it a really annoying attacker because if you don't bench a Manaphy against Maridon, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you can get KO'd by a Zapdos and give up two prizes, which is kind of insane. I mean, a lot of the time when you're playing against Maridon, unless you know they're playing Magnezone, you never have to put Manaphy into play, but now you have to because of Zapdos. Now, Zapdos is definitely in its early stages. It's not confirmed to be a great new partner for sure, but I do think that it has potential within Maridon nonetheless. 120 and 90 is pretty solid damage. If you're not one-shotting something with Maridon, sometimes you can clean them up later on with a multi-shot lightning. Of course, it can be very annoying to play against, against Lost Box, where you can take out multiple combos fees very strong card you do have to play with halucha in order to make this card worthwhile but it does seem to be a very strong inclusion within maridon and will probably be a staple in maridon going forward as it does seem like a very strong attacker because it's going to force players to now bench manaphy which can be very annoying when you're playing against maridon so definitely a huge addition to maridon and i'm going to be excited to see if zapdos sees a lot of play within the deck. It's just a really good lightning attacker in general. So definitely going to be a big upgrade for lightning decks and definitely one that is going to shake up the way you have to now play against Maridon. All right, we got some honorable mentions, some cards that didn't quite make the cut. And that is going to be Snatch Arm starting things off here with the effect your opponent reveals their hand, you put a Pokemon you find there on the bottom of their deck. This card is obviously just great with Arbok EX. It's one of the reasons why I put Arbok decently high on this list is because it has a really good partner with Snatch Arm. Of course, being able to remove a Pokemon from your opponent's hand is really good with Arbok because it means they have one less card. If you Iono your opponent to three cards, you Snatch Arm a Pokemon away. And honestly, the odds they have a Pokemon in their hand isn't even that low in my opinion. And then, of course, you can Arbok the remaining two cards away, leaving them with a zero card hand. So Snatch Arm is a really cool card with Arbok. I don't know how good Snatch Arm will be outside of playing it with Arbok, but I did want to include it as an honorable mention because it is a really unique card within the set that makes another EX pretty strong. Next up, we got Wigglytuff EX with the ability Expanding Body. If it has any special energy attached to it, it gets plus 100 HP, giving it 350 HP in total. It's a very bulky card, and of course it does work with another Wigglytuff in the format from Paldea Evolved that lets you put a therapeutic energy from your hand onto one of your Pokemon. So you do have some energy acceleration with the other Wigglytuff. You got a great ability. Your attack isn't bad either. You do 180 damage if you play supporter, which obviously is going to be good because you want to make sure you're playing a supporter card almost every turn half the time anyways. So really powerful card with a lot of HP. Could work with another Wigglytuff and could also be decent within something like Lugia. It does get shut off by Path, and that's kind of the thing that holds it back is Path the Peak kind of sucks for Wigglytuff because it immediately shuts off your ability and then you're just using a 250 HP Pokemon. Next up, we got Jinx EX. I know a lot of people were probably wondering where Jinx was on this list. Maybe Jinx would be the number 11 spot on this list, but it does have the attack Heart Stopping Kiss that for a water and a double turbo, if your opponent's active Pokemon is asleep, it is knocked out. There's actually quite a few effects in the format right now that can put your opponent to sleep. There's a brand new Hypno card that really does work well with Jinx's Heart Stopping Kiss attack. So yeah, Jinx is a really fun card. It insta-KOs the opponent's active Pokemon, and the insta-KO cards are always fun to play. And being a water Pokemon isn't bad. Its attack cost is decently efficient thanks to the water double turbo effect. You just have to find a way to put your opponent's active Pokemon to sleep. And there are quite a few cards in the format that allow you to do that. Next up, we got Clefable, which is another really good single prize attacker with the attack More Moon, that for three Psychic does 50 damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from this attack, you take one more prize card. That's pretty good. Now, Clefable could be good within the Clefairy, Clefable EX deck, but also seems like a good partner within stuff like Gardevoir or Zorobox. It does work with Reversal Energy. Now, of course, you probably have to play uh, Clefable with a damage modifier to knock out something like a Comfy. Um, but yeah, you can play with like Cleansing Gloves or something to knock out Ralston and Comfy. And you got yourself a pretty cool attacker that can take two prizes, which is really good. Now, even knocking something out that's been heavily damaged is also an option. It's not specifically basic. So like you can hit something really hard, not knock it out, and then finish off with Clefable. Maybe knock out like a two prizer or a three prizer and take four to three prizes for doing so with more moon. So yeah, Clefable's a pretty cool card. And I got some 
high hopes for Clefable because it does seem like it could see play within a few different archetypes because the attack is pretty good. Taking extra prizes, it's a pretty good effect. I'm not going to lie. But with that out of the way, let's go on to the number one spot. And at number one, probably to nobody's surprise, is Mew EX. In my opinion, this is the best card in the set. And I think it's universally agreed upon that Mew EX is the strongest new card to come out of Pokemon card 151. It's got the most potential in the format and will probably shake the format up actually quite a bit, mainly because of its attack, Genome Hacking. While the ability is nice, you can draw cards until you have three in your hand. Definitely really good in a meta with Iono Spam. The main selling point is that attack, of course, where for no energy specifically, you can choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. That is really good. A lot of attacks, especially on the big one a KO Pokemon like Tyranitar V and Giratina V Star can get knocked out very easily by Mew. And it is splashable in any deck. Not requiring any energy means you can play it in Maridon, you can play it in Lugia, you can play it in Gardevoir. Almost any deck can play Mew. Even Charizard EX could honestly play Mew. And again, being able to copy your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks is really good. There's a lot of really unique attacks to copy. Again, I've already named a few of them, but even other attacks like Rapid Flow could be really good to copy. Um, yeah, Mew is definitely going to shake the format up. It's going to be kind of interesting to see how people build their decks going forward because, or even play the game going forward when Mew EX is a threat in the format. Because again, you don't want to be immediately KO'd. I mean, that's something that like Giratina never really had to worry about is like, it didn't really have to a lot of the time worry about getting KO'd in return after doing like a Lost Impact or Star Requiem. But now that there is a way that po people can copy, you know, Giratina's attack and KO them in return is pretty deadly. So yeah, Mew's definitely a very scary card and will without a doubt see quite a bit of play. It's very splashable in almost any deck and going forward i think a lot of decks can honestly play mew is it is a very strong card great ability too especially in a meta where you can get iono to like two cards and lose the game because of it now that there's mew as long as there's no path in play or you draw a path out you can draw cards out of it and try to get back into the game and with that strong attack genome hacking it can be quite a bit of a big threat in the game so definitely mew is a very strong card you probably want to pick yourself up a couple copies of mew if you can because this card is going to be very good and it's splashable in almost any deck like i said and there you have it. That is the 10 best cards within Pokemon card at 151. This set does have a lot of promising new cards. There's even other cards I kind of wanted to mention, maybe even in the honorable mentions that I just couldn't get to. But yeah, this set is really good. And I cannot wait for it to come out. I actually think it might be better than Obsidian Flames, in my opinion, because it does have a lot more playable cards and a lot more interesting cards to shake up the format. And we were kind of lacking a shake-up format card since Paldea Evolved because we've kind of been in the same format since May because Paldea Evolved really didn't really change much after Obsidian Flames came out. So it's nice to see a new set come out that may make the game a bit more different and shake the format up a little bit, which I'm excited to see. But I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Let me know what you think are the top 10 best cards in the set in the comments, or even let me know if I missed any cards on this list. I'm interested to hear. Cannot wait to see you all on Friday once again for some Obsidian or some Pokemon card 151 content and all that good stuff. If you're going to get any Pokemon card 151 codes, you can get them over at Card Cavern 2. And of course, use Crawl DF on Friday when the set drops. So hope you all enjoyed the video and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.